Look who's here. You're mine. Kitchen Table Electronic Stairdown Volume 2, this time around with the just released Vinstieka Air Quality Monitor. This is basically the smarter successor to the IKEA Bindrichning that I have right here. So we're gonna just jump right into it with uh, the world's fastest unboxing. If I can get it open. Oh, come on. Oh, oh it comes with a USB cable. I'm not gonna need that. Get out of here. Uh, it's nice, actually. It's uh, fairly soft and, uh, okay, don't need that. Okay, there it is. So we have a, um, well, you can see me, it's a very reflective LCD module. Uh, it's not color, so they're actually just uh, free uh, dotted imprints here. It's, of course, a bit bigger than the uh, Bindrichning, but not by much. It's just a little bit deeper. I was actually expecting them to use the, the same case, but uh, it doesn't seem like it. And uh, yeah, it also seems like it uses a different sensor because there is a, a fan here that points outwards and there's an inlet and I can see there is something in it. So it's different than um, what the non-smart version, which is a, a fan down here that's sucking air through the sensor and then out of it. And at the same time, yeah, USB plug um, that's on the bottom, that's the same. So let's get inside. What kind of screws did they get? Oh, it's probably T6. So they upgraded from Philips to Torx this time around. That means they may not have the proper screwdriver on hand, unfortunately, because they're recessed fairly deep inside. Oh, never mind. Okay. Uh, on the top, forgot, there is a big button, which I think is for the backlight, and a smaller button for connecting it to the gateway. I should also add that this is, I think, the first accessory that will require the newer generation, the Hiera, and will not work with the first generation gateway. All right, four screws. Let's see how many I can manage to forget. And I expect the front panel to just pop off. It does not. Interesting. Did I glue it? Or does it need some more applied violence? Ooh. Uh, maybe that was not the way it should have been opened. Um, it's adhesive. Or maybe it is, and now, of course we have a really fragile ribbon, uh, but it's probably going to slide out. Okay. There we go. We've got a couple of cables. Okay. All right, so we have the main logic here and the sensor right here, which is completely different. Very interesting. So, um, oops, not gonna, let's try really hard not to crack that screen because uh, it's expensive actually. So this cable here actually goes to the top board, which has the buttons. While this cable here goes to the, this block, which is probably a sensor that does everything. Now they moved away from Torx and went back to Philips. So we're going to do the same. And oh, they're also really, really tight. All right, so the first screws, the four screws are out. Here's the rest of the technology. So on top, we just have the two buttons, nothing else. Um, I was actually expecting like a temperature sensor or something to be isolated, but it seems like it's not. So that means that everything is embedded into this uh, shielded can, which conveniently slides out. We actually need to remove this connector here. It's a, with a nice clip. There we go. Sen 54 from Sensirion, the sensor company. So this is totally different from um, what they did with the 
windrichtning. It's just completely different. Um, I do wonder, there is actually a gasket here, a sticky gasket. And I do wonder if I can look inside this sensor without um, damaging it, because I actually would like to, to test the, the, the unit before breaking it. But it uh, seems like it's held on by clips, uh, which seems, uh, I think this is probably just for shielding and yeah, there's still some black. So this is probably just shielding. Let's see. Yeah. So there is no point in removing this. Um, it's probably clipped on because I, I don't see any other screw. But yeah, this is a sensor. I will look into it later, but it probably does everything. So uh, particle counter, that's why there's a fan, um, humidity and temperature. In fact, a fan helps in all three situations because you, you measure it in the moving air and not standing still, which would probably be the temperature that's inside the chassis at that moment. So if you put it out in the sun, you will have a completely different measurement. Uh, this should be far better. So I think there isn't much. Um, that's just a sensor. And as for the logic, um, we have the same uh, gecko. I think that um, we saw last time in the deal here, and we've added a little microcontroller, which I cannot actually see who made it. That's bottom side top wise. It's like Vinca or something. Never seen this thing. VK one five two one maybe. Uh, there's not much light here, so I'll, I'll, I'll probably dig into it later, but that is super weird. Um, I, f I mean, you would you'd expect an STM32, but you also know that uh, it's really unlikely that they go with um, like a branded chip on such a, a device. Uh, we also have like this connector here, which looks... Uh, some of it goes to the sensor. Some of it goes up, so I guess it could be for the... Oh, would you look at that? Underneath the LCD, we have some debug pins for I2C. Uh, let's try to not to break the cable. That would be nice. Yeah, there we go. Clock, data, ground, and five volts. So that's really neat. And um, yeah, 35, 35th week of 2022, we also have some other. Oh, it's actually, uh, I didn't notice that because I was looking it upside down, but there's lots of uh, documented pin. So data right there, LED, button one, button two. Uh, that's probably serial, uh, BCC, ground reset, clock, transmit and receive. So it's probably open to quite a bit of modding this um, this cute little board. Uh, sadly, it's not as cheap as the Windrichtning. Um, this is 35 euros. So yeah, I think it, it's still cheaper to, um, if you just want HomeKit compatibility, it's still cheaper to just get the Windrichtning and add an ESP32 uh, Wi-Fi module or ESP2266 because that it's like a three euro module and a 10 euro sensor. So that's far cheaper than than this. But of course with this, um, you gain the display as well. And it should also work far better. Um, I've seen it work in the shop when I bought it in the store and it looked far more precise and it updated in real time, which is also something that uh, it's not very clear with um, the Windrichtning. So let's actually put it, uh, Put it back together, should be easy. And I'm gonna keep it open, so that would be, this plugs on the top, this one here, right, so. Um, I have some power, so why don't we plug it in and see. There we go. So, 22 degrees, which is fine, 48% humidity, and eight, which I don't know, it's like 8%, nine, 
this is I'm not in a clean room, so that's that's possible. Uh, I don't know what TVOC does with this arrow. And same for this symbol here. So if I press the button up top, uh, nothing happens on the back, on the front. Oh yeah, it turns off the, the backlight. So um, you see it updates really quickly. So if, let's see, if I breathe on it, humidity should rise up very quickly. And so it did. You see, of course, the number of um, the particular counter got a bit excited. So let's do it again. <laughs> yeah. So I should also add um, that this is much quieter. I can hear the fan. Which is some, which is a complaint that uh, I had to say with the Windrichtni, uh, which the fan would turn on and off, and you would hear when the fan would come on and off. So it would be a bit disturbing if you were in in silence. And yeah, we can also see the backlight that just uh, timers out. And um, there is no light sensor, so there is no way to turn it on and off automatically depending on the ambient lighting. But yeah, I cannot hear the fan. And you probably can't hear it too. It's super, super quiet. And you do feel a very, very small breeze, but that, that seems a, a much uh, higher quality uh, device than uh, the one supplied by, uh, by the other vendor for the Windrichtning. So yeah, I'm quite impressed. It's 35 euros, so it's, it's a little bit more expensive and it's more up to par with other smart air quality sensors, but it seems like a good quality product. Um, I will look into it a bit further. Uh, I want to dig deeper into the sensor and the microcontroller, so stay tuned for that. But till then, thanks for watching.